Hello and good morning, movie people. Good morning, Arrow Erica. Oh, that's place. <laughs> it makes it sound like your middle name is Erica. I was trying to, to mesh America and Arrow, and it just did not happen. I apologize. Mm, I, I'm sure we've seen movies like that. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of movies, this is it, man. Tickets are being sold like you wouldn't believe around the world. We, we, we got to talk about it. What, what do you think of the movie? What, what movie? Oh, it, it, a bunch of blue things. And it's, and it's supposed to be underwater. Who's Smurf? Yeah, New Smurf movie. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> right. It's called it's called Tall Smurfs Underwater Part right. Two. <laughs> so um, true. Avatar: The Way of Water in 3D. I saw it. And, I saw it. Uh, yeah. You know, 13 years coming, and the first one I saw one time in 2009. I remember what I can from that. Thank God I brought along with me my friend Ella Curran, who is a big, big Avatar fan. I mean, she showed up in an Avatar costume and had Avatar wow. gear. She was so excited she's seen the movie so many times, but I cannot tell you how many times I had to interrupt her sitting next to her at the screening, asking her questions about, like, wait a minute, so is that person still have a human body back in the thing, and this person's an Avatar, and wait, is that is that that um, supposed to be Kate Winslet? Is that supposed to be Zoe Saldana? Is that what, like I, I needed some kind of refresher? You know how like TV series at the start of a new season or even at the start of new episodes they'll be like previously on yep, on yep, you yep, know, Gossip yep. Girl they're yep. like but we didn't get I needed that for this so I highly recommend to anyone like me who has only seen Avatar the original one time back when it first came out 13 years ago check it out again or at least do diligence reading or bring along a friend who's seen it more recently that can answer questions because this is a movie that is does not stand alone you will be very confused if you don't know well the good news um, is is that it's on television it's on different streaming the, the, the james cameron has made it available for people to go and see it before going to it Mm-hmm. And, oh, and, and this past July, he actually released it in theaters. We can, we can, right, right. So so hopefully people took advantage of that. But at the same time, I know the movie is like 80 hours long. It still <laughs> Would it have killed them to give like a three and a half minute refresher? I think not. Right, right. I would have loved that. So anyway, that aside, that's probably my biggest criticism about the film. I I think it's, um, you know, visually, the first one came out was a total game changer for, for cinema and really changed the way that things are. And suddenly you were doing cool stuff and seeing things like you've never before all this motion capture and it it changed movies and and this one now it's like we've seen it before so it's not as dazzling but it's right. still totally captivating once again and the reason apparently that it took 13 years to come is because james cameron director of titanic and this is you know um Avatar was his first film since then. This is his first film since the first Avatar. He's got three more coming for a total of five. Um, that he really wanted to wait till motion capture technology was good enough to be able to use it underwater. Now, I appreciated it, and yes, it looked good, but I feel like there's so much. I kind of wanted a little bit more human because the one thing that motion capture, for as good as all of the effects are, you can't really read the chemistry between characters. Right. Yes, their eyes are big and expressive, but their face muscles are a little bit lacking. Their hands look real. Like I was missing some of the humanity of it. The story was a little formulaic. Um, you know, good guy, bad guy, rescue, hunter, hunted this. And then also you could certainly tell in the cli climax that this was the guy who did Titanic, couldn't you? Well, okay, I'm glad you said it because that's yeah. that's where it lost me because I felt like I was watching Titanic 2022. Yeah, exactly. And you are. Um, and it's great. And I was into it, but I was also like, wait a minute, it's so like with Titanic. I'm like, oh, it's the guy who did Titanic doing Titanic. And I'm like, it's okay. I'm I'm here for it. But then you know, here's the thing: it's you don't go for the story. It's really not the greatest. These, these characters, the story again, it's nothing. Really, the first film had a little bit more. Um, it was a loose kind of metaphor for environmentalism. Mm -hmm. This one, if it's a metaphor for anything, it's kind of like. It's almost like the Earthlings and humans are the villains that are coming after to it. Like, like Earth is dying and we're going to invade another planet and destroy a species right. to, for our own survival. And it's kind of like we're the bad guys. And I don't like watching movies like that where all of humanity, all of Earth is like – we're the villains, and you know what I mean? And then it's a, it's, it's a strange kind of position to put us in. It has problems with the story, but you don't go to see this for the story. You go to see this for the visuals, and you 
only go to see it in the theater. There's no reason to wait and watch. Even those of us with the 75 inch TVs, like, are the are bigger and the rest of it. You still got this is still one you got to see in the theater. I'm sorry, not sorry. There's one, and I don't want to be a spoiler, but there's one maybe 10 to 15 minute area of the movie where my wife w- got up and walked out because it was so painful to watch. Really? You know where it is. Um. Oh, painful. Like sad. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh, I think I thought I thought it was yeah. way too real. I understand the message that was there because it's still going on. But but yeah. but wow. It it to me it was a game changer in if I loved it or if I liked it. No, absolutely, absolutely. It was very very um, difficult to watch. It's the same kind of thing. Yeah. Let's not do any spoilers. But yeah, yeah. I, I agree with you. I closed my eyes actually. Come to think of it, I yeah. did close my eyes during that part. Yep, yep, yep. Yeah, I knew something was wrong with her when she started singing Christmas. She her eyes were closed and she was sing, singing Christmas carols. And I went, oh, yeah, I, I said, yeah, I said, yeah, the best thing to do is just get up and leave. That might be a hint. Then absolutely. Uh, <laughs> so, so if, if, if you're inclined to see it at all, and I, I imagine many people are, you got to see it in the theater. Yeah. Um. So, so that's the new Avatar film, and the, you know, Tall Smurfs Underwater. So, what what's your gut on Empire of Light? I've seen it twice now. Oh wow, that had to be difficult. Because <laughs> <laughs> it's so slow. I mean, I love Sam Mendes. He wrote and directed it. He also did American Beauty. He also did Skyfall and Spectre. I mean, the man is capable of great suspense and discomfort and action uh, and story arc. And and it is there. I really love the performances. I love Olivia Coleman. I love Colin Firth. Yeah. This Michael Ward is phenomenal as well. Um, he plays the young unlikely love interest for olivia coleman and that's all very well done and there's there's the chemistry in this film that you don't see in avatar because they're you know avatars Mm -hmm. um which wait by the way i don't know that there really were any more avatars in avatar i kind of (laughs) think they're now just like not avatars like why are you still calling it anyway anyway okay back to empire of light it's it's beautifully shot it's just a small mundane story about in early 1980s England where um, some people work at a movie theater and some of them are gross and some of them are sweet and some of them are struggling with loneliness and other things. And, um, and it's set against the backdrop potential subplot of the political uprising and riot riots, uh, race riots in the early 1980s. And then it's kind of over and i'm like it's just kind of small quiet. like this is unlike avatar where i was just like if you're gonna see it, you gotta see it in the theater empire of light i'm like you can wait to watch it at home stream yeah, it yeah i'll tell you the uh this is where i'm disappointed with it is that that i've worked in a movie theater i put a lot of passion in being at that movie theater but yet there is not that camaraderie or that collaboration in a movie theater uh if, if we ever worked together it was on the floor it was never in a room mm-hmm. and and the drama that was nothing compared to the drama at a movie theater Oh, there's more drama at a movie theater? Oh, my God. Okay, see, so now, if that's the case, that's kind of like doing a reality show with people that are, like, crazy, and the reality show makes them all look perfect. Yeah, yeah. Like, not okay. Like, you want to see the conflict. I mean, if we're going to pay for the ticket and go see the movie, you want to see the, oh, my God, it's uh, too crazy to be true. And we had a little bit of that there, you know, Um, but not enough to really warrant, you know, I think the the price of admission. I mean, this is not one of Sam Mendes' best films. Yeah, the gentleman that wanted to get in with the food, I I mean I, that yeah. I've lived. I've lived that, and and and, really? and that I mean, even the second time when I watched it, it, it got under my skin, and and because I mean you you deal with that kind of stuff all the time, and it's like oh yes, oh, the my. unruly customers. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. And, and you know they're, they're always right, which is the reason why I've created an iHeart Radio channel that's called the customer is never right. Oh my God, I want to hear that. <laughs> can I can I be on that? I think I've been that customer once in a while. And then I kind of, but, but the thing is, the difference is in the moment I realize it and I'm like, oh my God, oh my God, I, I'm a Karen. And I look around and I apologize to the people around me and the person I was talking to. I'm like, hi, I'm sorry. I can't believe I was just becoming that person. You're just doing your job. I'm so embarrassed right now. I just had this, you know, sort of self-awareness bomb in my head just go off. And like, no, but that's really funny because, um, I, I think there should just be a movie or a TV series called Customer Service. Yeah, where it's little, yeah. that's the reality show. But you know, the people that you're—they'd all have to would never want to be shown on TV. But you're right; those are some of the—that's some of the biggest drama in the world. Absolutely, absolutely. You saw one more. Which one was it? Nanny. It, it premieres today oh. on streaming on Prime Video. It stars Anna Diop, um, who plays an immigrant nanny. Uh, from Nigeria, she's working for an Upper East Side New York City family, and the parents are 
played by Michelle Monaghan and Morgan Spector, who I love from HBO's The Gilded Age. Mm. Uh, so the cast is great. Anna's great. They're great. One of the worst movies of the year. Oh, no. For some reason, this this nanny is has nightmares about water. You don't ever understand why. There's this random, displaced, suspenseful music. It's marketed as a horror slash thriller. It's neither. Uh, it's barely dramatic. It's like there's a couple moments, but in like only 90 minutes, it's a short movie, 90 minutes felt, feels longer, but it's nothing happens, nothing gets explained. Like like the, a couple things that do happen, you're like, okay, she wouldn't put up with that. This is ridiculous. Like, no, it is so, just so, so implausible and dumb. And, and then the explanation and the ending is horrible. And literally 20 minutes in, I was feeling like, can I just kind of like, fast forward like zoom <laughs> forward and kind of see if anything jumps out that looks watchable because i don't care and i don't want to watch any of this and yet i watched it and like had i zoomed forward there was like no, there's a couple things maybe visually it turns out to there's some like fantasy awkward supernatural element that like has a twist that pops in like it's like what 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 why this and then it's not explained. So mm. dumb. So mm. skip it. It's one of the worst movies of the year. Hey, yesterday I was blessed with the opportunity to meet uh, a gentleman who owns one of the largest independent uh, theater chains in in the southeast. And 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 I mean, I, I, I've been in the the, the movie things forever, it, movie business basically. And and to have him there in front of me, he he told me Avatar. There are so many theaters right now banking on it because if it doesn't work, we're probably going to see a lot more darker theaters. Damn. They're, they are really, really in trouble. It's go time. I mean, I, I, but you know what, though? I think you remember pre-pandemic, I was predicting to you that it's going to be a slow burn. We're going to see theaters close and streaming is going to take over. Yep. The pandemic uh, really sped the future and it's just happening a lot faster than we thought. But I still I still feel like technology, like social media, you know, you cannot stop. You cannot stop the once the snowball starts rolling down the hill. There's no stopping it. Yeah. Yeah. So what's going on on RyanJReviews.com? Just my uh, full reviews. Just, just, just. Only just, my full reviews. Only, you can oh. see, you know, you can see all my celebrity interviews and other things. So <laughs> it's all good. But um, yeah, that's that's all. <laughs> hey, the Golden Globes and stuff are, are they? I mean, the nominations have been announced, and Olivia Cole is up for one. Do you believe that she deserves that? Um, yeah, I can see her for that. I like her a lot more than Michelle Williams and the Fablemans, but I am at the uh, TV station and have to run because um, I'm about to, I'm actually filling in guest co-hosting the full hour oh, now, so I have you. to go over scripts and things. But um, that's definitely like next week uh, or, or soon do another section where we can talk about because the Critics' Choice Awards nominations, that's the one I vote for, just were announced as well, and we can compare the two. And that is what you call a billboard. Until next time. <laughs> Great. Love you, man. Love you too, Arrow. Thank you so much.